Well, Genesis 18, I'm thinking. <laughs> Genesis uh, 18, and uh, we're going to pick it up in verse 20. Genesis 18, it's good to be saved. Yeah. Oh my, what an understatement. It's good to be in church on a Thursday night. Yeah. All right, I'll sit there down there. Genesis 18 and uh, verse 20. And it says this, And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. All sin is grievous. Yeah. Yeah. But the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, it was very mm. grievous. Uh, verse 21, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which has come up unto me. And if not, I'll know. I will know. And so he sent, uh, he sent his angels down there, and they found out it was. Sodom and Gomorrah were ungodly yeah. places. I mean, you know, they like to do history month, you know. Everybody's got a history month. And, uh, and I could care less. I don't care. But if the uh, LGBTQ, why don't they just call it plus? They put a plus at the end of it right now. So why don't they just call it the Q plus? That would sum it all up. But if they ever wanted to uh, do a, 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 their own month for, and, and they could trace their history right back here to Genesis 18. I could help them out. Right there, buddy. That's where it started as far as we can tell. So it's an ungodly city, and guess what? Uh, there's many, many ungodly cities still. Yeah. We're going to talk about Abraham and Lot for a minute. Lot, Abraham's nephew, he moved there, and he knew better. Amen. He should have been an enemy of Sodom, not a resident, but he, he had gotten away from the most spiritual influence in his life, which was Uncle Abraham, and he justified going against everything he knew to be right. Lot was raised right. Yeah. Yeah. He was raised by the most spiritual man in the Bible, a friend of God. And you know he knew, just like some of you. Yeah. You're raised in church, you know right from wrong. Yeah. And so did Lot. And he justified Go into that ungodly place for this right here. Just like people still do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. People that should know better. Yeah. And uh, he went there to make money, but in the end, he paid a big price yeah. for that decision. And traveling around, I think of a lot of people, more than a few, that have done the same thing. For filthy lucre, the Bible talks about. Now, you know this, I, I trust you uh, read through this uh, before. Uncle Abraham had, had gone out on a limb several times for Lot. Amen. And uh, so you wonder, I mean, he ended up where he ended up. You think, did he appreciate it? And I'd say he probably did at the time. Oh, thank you, thank you for delivering me. Thank you for risking everything. Thank you for paying the price. Thank you, Uncle Abraham. And then a little time had passed, and he'd go right back to Sodom. And people that God has been so good to are often the same way. And I don't doubt they don't appreciate the goodness of God and the hear, God hearing their prayers and the deliverance that God sends, but then after a while, they go right back to the same thing, same friends, same places which will lead you right back to the same activity that got you in trouble the first time. I'm talking about same people do this. Uh, my little girl at uh, 33, 32, how old is she? 32. But remember when she used to come around with us and, uh, and uh, she'd tell me when she was about 13, she said, Dad, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. And I looked at her, and I'd never heard that before. And I looked at her, I'm going, where did this kid get this intelligence? Because we know where she didn't get. Okay, moving on. <laughs> but that's what people do. That's what Christians do. They do the same thing over and over. My preacher said one time, the wrong road never turns out at the right place. 
and some of us will get some things straightened out, and again, it's usually because of God's mercy, and we'll get it right, and we'll appreciate it for a while, and we'll get right back on the same road, thinking, well, maybe this time. Are you kidding? That's insanity, all right. There's a verse that backs up what I'm trying to say. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 22 says this. Now, we're going to come back to Genesis 18, so if you already left that in the past, you're going to have to go back to it. It says, 2 Peter 2, 22, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So Peter's using dogs and sows to, des- to describe people that do basically what Lot did and so many of others have done. Boy, I tell you what, these days, these days, social media would have a meltdown if you called somebody a dog or a sow. Amen. <laughs> But that's Bible. I didn't make that up. I don't listen. I couldn't come up with anything to preach that would give me more shock value than just read what the Bible says. And uh, if you're if you're in here tonight and you've got an NIV, I would like for you to read me what that says because I would really be interested to see how they destroyed that verse. It says you ain't tricking me. <laughs> I ain't trying to trick you. I'm confident anybody here's got the right Bible. And if you don't, we'll give you one. Amen. Uh, The dog had turned again to his own vomit. And you see Christians making the same mistakes. I heard a preacher say one time in a meeting, he said, uh, he said, you need to come down there and leave your birds at an altar and then cut the rubber band because you've been doing this so long. You leave it here, and by the time you get back to your seat, you're like pulling it back. (laughs) And you don't have to do that. Uh, Amen. Amen. All right, so back to Genesis 18 and verse 24, and you've got Abraham bargaining with God for Sodom because these guys are going to go down and destroy it, and Abraham's nephew's there and his wife and his kids, and it says in verse 24, Perventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are in them? This is a pretty big city. And Abraham started off at 50, and while he was thinking about it, he went, ooh, that might be too high. <laughs> Verse uh, 25 said, That it be far from thee to do after this manner, to, stay, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and, and that the righteous should uh, be as the wicked, that that be far from thee. And then look what it says. It finishes the verse. He's bold, isn't he? Yeah. Shall not the judge of all the earth yeah. do right? They were friends. Amen. They had to be. <laughs> Amen. Verse 26, and the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for, all their, for their sakes. And that's when the bartering begins, because before Abraham was done, he worked that thing from 45 to 40 to 30 to 20 to 10, and he thought, well, surely Lot and his family will make 10. And Jenna went down to three or two or maybe one. Abraham posed the question that uh, caused me to develop this message. Shall not the God of all, shall not the, I'm sorry, judge of all the earth do right? Now, of course, the answer is yes. Every time. Amen. Every single time. Yeah. Now, Uh, If God never does wrong, and he doesn't, and we're supposed to, as children of God, supposed to pursue holiness and godliness, and we are, well, then we shouldn't do wrong either, ever, ever either. You know what I got said. We should do right. So I want to preach on how to do right tonight. Uh, according to the Bible. Uh, take your Bible, go to John chapter 1. And I'm going to read one verse and pray, and we'll go to where our tech, where our message is coming from. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Now, the two, sad, two of the saddest verses in the Bible precede this. I better 
go ahead and look at them after saying that because it's, it's really, it is, it's sad. It said he, he came unto the world, verse 10, I think, I think it is, let me find it. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. And he did, he made the world. And, uh, and if it could get worse, uh, he came unto his own. And his own received him not. That's all them that were looking forward to the cross, I get. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, but then verse 12, and thank God for verse 12, yeah. because it says, uh, yeah. but as many as received yeah. him. Yeah. Have you received him? Yeah. I mean, is he your savior? Yeah. I mean, you can jam it in here, but boy, you receive it here. Yeah. Bible says, for with the heart, yeah. man believeth unto righteousness. Yeah. So the verse says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power uh, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now what in the world would God give you and me power? He, by receiving him, we get forgiveness. But we got more than that. It says he gave them power. And so I'm going to tell you what that power is for. That power ain't for you to go do whatever you want. That's what lost people do. Amen? He gave us all the power to do right. That's what he did. We're not going to on our own. We've got a nature. We're we're lucky if we're bad 500. But he gave us something when he saved us, and he gave us power. And it's the power to do right. Now let's pray. Father, I love you. And again, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for the good spirit here. And thank you, God, for the good singing. And thank you, God, for uh, this word and this book. And I pray and ask that you'd help me say something, be a blessing to your people. Some that put a smile on your face, glorify your son, be according to thy will. And I pray, Lord, if there's uh, somebody that's not where they ought to be as their walk with God, they get something tonight, help them straighten that out. Do something supernatural for us, Lord. We didn't come here to get entertained. We didn't come here to check a box. We're gathered together in your name so that you might be in our midst and meet with us. Father, I pray if there's somebody in here that's not saved, does not know where they'd spend eternity. What a blessing to be able to say that according to your Bible, we can know. And uh, so, Father, please help me to preach. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Second Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. We're going to be over there for a while. Second Peter chapter 1. Now I'm going to point something out. And it says in Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, he's been at it a while, and he introduces himself in the second epistle that he wrote first as a servant. He uses his common name, Simon Peter. I want you to hold your place there, but I want you to go to 1 Peter, chapter 1. Now, he writes this, and he kind of declares his authority here. Peter, that's the name the Lord gave him, an apostle of Jesus Christ. You better listen to me, because I'm a doctor. <laughs> to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Beth- Bithynia. Amen? I find it interesting that he introduces himself second. Now he's matured a little bit in the Lord. Humility Amen. is evidence of spiritual maturity. You don't have to stand up there and blow your own horn and read your resume and your pedigree. Amen? I don't like that stuff. Amen? That's man worship stuff. So I find it significant that Peter, you know, when you realize it ain't all about you, well, then you're making progress. So I'm impressed with Peter. Now, verse 2. We're in, where are we? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. And he writes this, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God 
and our Lord and of Jesus our Lord. Amen. To the knowledge of God. Psalm 9 says in verse 10 that, that uh, oh, what does it say? The fear of the Lord is the beginning. Of, we're talking about the knowledge of God. Knowledge of the holy is understanding. Listen, you ain't going to get knowledge of the holy on new YouTube. Right. Amen. I mean, I'm not saying there's not some people out there doing right, but I just want to... There's a few, not very few. Right. Knowledge of the holy comes from God's holy book. Amen. Amen. It, it says that, that the grace and knowledge be multiplied to you. Well, I'm, grace and peace, I need all the grace and peace I can get. And there's the secret how to get it. It's not a secret. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, take, Jesus talking, said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Amen. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. So it's real clear. It's not my opinion. It's not a thought, I think. No, it, the Bible makes it clear that the more you learn about him, the more grace and peace you have. Amen. More peace you'll have for yourself, more grace you'll have with others. Amen, amen. amen. It all comes from what he said there. Knowledge of him. Look at that verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Here we go again. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. That's pretty important. It says it in two verses. You're familiar with 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh, the Bible says, many of you, you can turn there. I'll give you a second. And I mean it this time. That's three seconds. You're done. Uh, 2 Peter 3 verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for repentance, for, okay, let me find For doctrine, for proof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly. Doesn't say thoroughly. And I wouldn't, if it did, I'd be fine. But it says thoroughly, doesn't it? Yeah. Or did your version of the King James Bible change that? Like they take the E out of show, uh, show yourself, show thyself, okay. Study to show thyself approved unto God. They'll take that. Somebody hands me a Bible and say, what do you think it is? And I'll look. I'll go right to that verse. And if they change that letter from an E to an O in show, and I pronounce it show, um, I, what else did they change? That's where my mind, I'm simple. I'm not real deep. I, I don't have, have a clue what the Greek or Hebrew word for all is, but in English it means all. All scripture. So that whole scripture is, is, is for you, even if it's not all to you doctrinally. Amen. It's profitable. Amen. Amen. I think I just say that to thank God for putting me in a church that taught me the Bible is inspired Amen. and inerrant. And I, didn't, I wasn't on a quest or a search. I was in jail. God came and preached the truth. I asked the Lord to save me. I, went, I just had nobody sense then when I made bond to go to the church that sent the guy to tell me the truth that I responded to that I got saved. That's all right. I'm simple. <laughs> and so the guy taught why the King James Bible is the word of God for a year in Sunday school. Every Sunday. Repetition, contrast, and comparison. Even I learned some things. Coming out of 20 years of dope and liquor, I learned some things. Then it's been a year, uh, I, what a, why, how to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. And I thought everybody had all that stuff until I got on the road. <laughs> and I didn't end up there because of any desire for God. I wasn't looking for God, boy. He found me in cell two, third floor. And I had enough sense to make the right decision after Amen. making having a 30-plus year life of making the wrong decision. And I asked the Lord to save me. And God put me at Charity Baptist Church, and it is no more. But the fruit of that work is all, well, there's two of us right here. Amen. We're still in the fight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we got nowhere to go. We talked about it one time, I think. <laughs> I can't remember if we did or not. Peter said, well, the Lord said in John 6, will you also go away? And uh, no way, Lord. No, he said, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Where in the world do you think you're going to go? 
There ain't no place to go. Amen. And, uh, you know, I just tell that, say this, maybe some of you should uh, thank the Lord uh, uh, for uh, uh, putting you in a Bible-believing church that, that believes that the King James Bible is inerrant and inspired. Because let me tell you something, traveling around the country, I'm here to tell you, they ain't on every corner. And there's churches, and they'll say, King James, and they're in their internet ad. They used to have phone books. And boy, they'll correct that book. I've seen pastors stand in the pulpit and say, we believe it just the way it's written. And I know people that have been to their little schools and the Greek and Hebrew guys in there correcting it left and right. They're liars. Amen. I'm trying not to get ugly, but when you got a jump start on being ugly, it's easy. You ought to thank God for this church. And you ought to let not some little nickel dime thing get you crossways with this church and go down the street, go down the street to some other place that's got Baptist on the name and think you're in a Bible believing work. Now, there's some around. I've been to some. I go to a bunch of them. But uh, man, I thank God for the little church that took me when I knew nothing and taught me some things. Amen. We're talking about the Word of God here. He's talking about the knowledge of of him and the knowledge of God. And, and let me just say something about this book right here. This is not a religious book. That's not a religious book. I have hundreds of religious books. I got a fantastic library. In our living room, my wife's got a library with a couple hundred books on it. That's hers. And you go into my study, and I got, I got bookcases on either side of the fireplace, and I got bookcases over here with everything Dr. Ruckman ever wrote. And I got hundreds of religious books, but this ain't one of them. Amen. That ain't one of them. I had a preacher come to my house one time, and he says, uh, wow, Brother Spurgeon, you have a very impressive library. And I went, well, thank you, thank you. Because <laughs> I do. Amen. And he said, have you read all these books? And to me, it should be obvious that I haven't. <laughs> he said, have you read all these books? And I said, read them. I thought preachers were just supposed to collect them. <laughs> I've been reading this book for 33 years, and when I get to the last page, I wrote a note many years ago that said, go back to the beginning and start over. <laughs> this is not a religious book. This is God's book. And somebody, I don't know who or where, but uh, sometimes people coin little phrases that are pretty accurate. So uh, they said it like this, B-I-B-L-E stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. And that's simplistic. Some of the things that come out of like vacation Bible school are more profound than what's coming across pulpits in America these days. Amen. 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 And uh, and, uh, that's important, these basic instructions before leaving earth because everybody's leaving. Yeah, Yeah, everybody's leaving. Uh, It's temporary. What do you mean yet? Well, your time on it's temporary. Uh, It says in James 4 and 14, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, Uh, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. What is your life? Your life is temporary. Amen? It's a drop in a bucket. And recently I was thinking about somebody that's long gone, and they were in the ministry for a while, and they're long gone. And if I dwell on that too long, I come up with a list I don't even want to be reminded of. But I think, you know, it's a crying shame that, that people appear for a little time going to serve God. And then where, where are they? They vanisheth away. I respect people that stick with it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I had good examples, and I want to follow that example right to the end of the road. Now, so it's uh, everybody's leaving, you're leaving, you've got an appointment, you know that. Yeah. And, but I'm going to tell you something else, the earth itself is temporary. Yeah. 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 Uh, 2 Peter 3 and verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, yeah. in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, uh, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And there is also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Basic instruction. How do you know? Basic instruction before leaving earth. I preached a message a long time ago, and I said Al Gore was right. (laughs) 
global warming is scriptural. <laughs> but ladies, don't let them guilt trip you into thinking it was your hairspray <laughs> or, or, or SUV exhaust. But it, uh, uh, there's a furnace in the center of the earth and it's being stoked every time a soul descends down there. Amen. So that Bible is basic instruction before leaving earth and, and, and everybody's leaving, but where you go when you leave is revealed in this book. And uh, thank God there's only two choices. Many choices I made wrong in the first 37 years of my life. If this thing was multiple choice, I'd have probably got it wrong. But you can't get it wrong unless you just reject Jesus Christ altogether. There's only two choices. One's heaven, and that's when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ uh, for the forgiveness of your sin, you get to go to heaven. And then the other choice is hell. And those are the only two choices. Amen. And you don't have to do a lot of research to think, okay, a beautiful, perfect place or a fire. Mm, that's hard. <laughs> And we preach on how to get to heaven. And to get your to get, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. It's not difficult. And then I had a guy in Montana a couple years ago. He said, you guys, you preachers preach on how to get to heaven all the time. What do you got to do to go to hell? He said that to me. And I said, nothing. You're doing fine. <laughs> you just keep going the way you're going. You're going to end up there. That book says in John chapter 3 that we're, you're condemned already. Yeah. Now, it's interesting to me that there are some people that believe they're going to come back as an animal. <laughs> there is. The reincarnation is, uh, there's more people that believe in that than you think. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I got a feeling a bunch of them live in California. But <laughs> <laughs> I tell people, I'm going, I'm flying out to LA, I'm going to, I got a couple of churches in California. They go, oh, how can you go out there? It's so simple. I said, buddy, there are people out there that are taking a stand to live for Jesus Christ where it ain't popular and it ain't easy, and, and, and I am honored to be able to go out there and try to encourage them. They don't know what they're missing. We go to New York City and do the same thing. How can you stand it? There's so many sinners. I said, where are we supposed to go in evangelism? Where are we supposed to go? North Carolina, the Bible Belt, you know, and there's plenty of sin there, too. Amen. All right, so uh, uh, I don't know. Okay, I'm back to the animal. Almost lost it there. Amen. <laughs> so people are going to come back reincarnated as an animal. Uh, did I say it? Yeah, I think I did. Uh, what if you come back as a mosquito? <laughs> and somebody swats you. What if you come back as a cow? And end up on a plate. And a Baptist preacher comes in and orders it. And listen, beef, yeah. it is what's for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I might have ate a Buddhist the other day. I was, just, I was somewhere. <laughs> verse 3, go back to verse 3. For, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. My wife is going to tell you. Here's what she's going to say to me on the way home. You know what she's going to say? You had a little too much liberty tonight, Brother Spurgeon. <laughs> well, I tell you what, better another way. Amen, amen. I've been there. Amen. So verse 3 again, according as his divine power has given unto us all, look what it says, all things that pertain unto life and, I got this, and, God, and godliness <laughs> through the knowledge of him, there you go again, who hath that a knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Amen. You are given all things that pertain on all things that pertain unto life and God. Different people have different gifts. You guys have so many musicians. I hate it. I mean, I didn't get none of that. The only thing I got musically was a desire to encourage anybody that can play an instrument or sing a song to do it for Jesus Christ. I guess that's my call. And I do it. I do it. Amen. But, buddy, I'm going to tell you what it ain't. Some of you were given all things, and some of you are given this. No, if you're saved here tonight, you are given all things that pertain to the life and godliness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that, listen, you are given some things when you are born again. Say, yeah, I know, forgiveness of sin and eternal life and deliverance from hell. No, you're given more than that even. Amen. 
all things that pertain unto life and godliness. I'm here to tell you if you're saved, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what your past was like. If you're saved, you are given the ability to do right. Amen. That's exactly what he's talking about. Verse 5. We're in 2 Peter 1, and it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That, what a beautiful description of your Bible. Yeah. Amen? Why would anybody want to tamper with the poetry oh, of the yeah. King James Come Bible? On Come on. The, Lord refer, the Holy Spirit that penned this book calls it exceeding great and yeah. precious promises. Yeah. And then it says, by these, by those exceeding great and precious promises, ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Mm. Divine, that's God. Mm. Yeah. Amen. And you and I, because of what this book showed us, first how to get saved, and then how to grow in grace and knowledge, are partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Yeah. If you're saved, you don't have to be prey to that corruption anymore. You say, yes, but I'm still a sinner, and, and sometimes I can't help it. Uh, yes, you definitely still have a carnal, a carnal nature. No doubt about that. But according to the promises of God given in this book, you also have abilities that you didn't have before. You've got power you didn't have before because you now also have divine power. I get tired. Listen, I understand we've got a sin nature. I understand we're sinners saved by grace. Paul said, of, of, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I was chief back when the no, he says, am. Right. Amen. Amen. I get that. But I tell you what, I've seen some people just use that sin nature as a crutch to not do right. Yep. Yeah. Listen, are you saved in here tonight? Amen. Yep. Amen. Doesn't that make you a child of the king? Yeah. What, if, what if we start thinking about how to conduct ourselves as children of the king instead of using that stinking flesh? as an excuse to fail. Amen. Now, we still fail sometimes, but, you know, a just man falleth seven times. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But rise up again Amen. and Amen. get back up and get back in the fight. Get right, repent, get back in the fight. Amen. All right. Uh, now, there's a term that, uh, that's come on, in, you know, in our lifetime, um, uh, DNA. I don't know when that started showing up in the news. I don't know when that became... Uh, a thing I never heard of it for many, many, many years. Right. DNA. Uh, I'm going to tell you what that means. Now, if you're a doctor or a nurse, you can correct me, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. Like this, and I can probably say anything because you don't know. <laughs> Somebody will know. You probably got a nurse in here. Okay, deoxyribonucleic acid. Oh, I broke it down by syllable so that I could say it right. <laughs> yeah. And so, translation, hereditary material. That's much easier. And so DNA, you hear about it, you know, it is something you were born with. Yeah. Something that, that, that cannot be changed. Ask Michael Jackson. Yeah. He was a black kid. And he, want, he made a million dollars, and he wanted to be a white kid. And he, if, if money could buy it, he'd have pulled it off. But he never pulled it off because his DNA says that he's a black kid. Yeah. Then there's a gal that we read about in the news. Her name was Rachel Dolenzall. Anybody ever heard of her? Yeah. My, thank you, Susan. And the, <laughs> Rachel Dolenzall was a girl that, that was a white girl that did a lot of suntan stuff and braided her hair, and went to college up in Seattle, don't you know, and ended up becoming the president of the Seattle chapter of the NAACP. And she got away with it. She wanted to be black so bad. She knew every. She read everything. She knew more about black heritage than black people do because she is an academic, and she pulled it off. And then one day somebody went to introduce her, interview her parents, and they are whiter than them. And they said, well, I don't know what happened to her. She ain't black. But she wanted to be, but guess what? Her DNA made her white. You can't change it. Then you got the famous woman that uh, Donald Trump called Pocahontas. 
And there's a white girl from Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren, that said, I am a Native American. She wanted to be a Native American so bad so she could get a big discount when she went to Harvard. <laughs> Amen. And they finally made her take the test, and she had like a hundred millionth of an Indian in her. <laughs> but she wanted to be. But I'm telling you, our DNA, you can't change it. Yeah. There's a name that's come on the scene lately, Dylan Mulvaney. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't drink beer, but if I did, I'd quit. <laughs> now, Dylan Mulvaney is a boy, yeah. but wants to be a girl so bad. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Amen. You can't change it. Yeah. What is wrong with these people? Yeah. But if you've been born again, you got new DNA. Yeah. Now it said divine nature, so I call it the divine nature advantage. Yeah. I know you're impressed. Don't you write that down? And because of that, regardless of whatever before that, the day you got born again, you were given all things that pertain unto uh, uh, life and godliness. And. Uh, You've got the power to do right yeah. because of your DNA as a child of God. Amen. You have access to all things. Amen. Amen. So somebody asked me, you know, because everybody's sending in their uh, in DNA to Ancestry.com or other sites like that. And I know people that do that. I know a girl in New York that's so Italian. <laughs> I mean, she is Italian, generations of Italian. And, uh, and uh, so... so she decides to send in a sample of her DNA. I don't know what you do, put a booger in a tube. I don't know. What do you do? I love saying that. My wife gives me looks you wouldn't believe. And so she sends it in, and she wants to find out what part of Sicily her roots are. She found out she's Greek. And this is her whole life she thought she was Italian. I, my mother was half Irish. And I'm not sending nothing in because I don't want to find out I'm something else. <laughs> but that's not the real deal. The real deal. People have said, Brother Spurgeon, have you ever done that? And I said, you got to be kidding me. For 40 years, I had to worry about a fingerprint showing up at a crime scene. <laughs> I think I'm good now. If you think I'm going to give them DNA so that, oh, we found a hair over LSD, let's test this out. Let's, if you think the federal government doesn't have access to all that DNA, DNA collection stuff, it's probably the whole thing's a sting operation. And I'm not a conspiracy guy at all. But I do have some experience with the federal government. <laughs> and I didn't work for them. <laughs> they work for you. <laughs> Verse 5, and be, there's more. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Charity is the top of the food chain. Yeah. Amen. But let me tell you something, all that adding, you can start out, add to your faith. You start out by grace through faith, believing what Christ did on the cross for you, for your sin. You start out, and you've got a lifelong challenge to add these things. And, you know, I don't believe you can just jump around. Oh, I'm saved now. I think I'll add some knowledge before virtue. You know what virtue is? Moral goodness. You don't get victory over some stinking sins in your life, and you start pumping that King James Bible, you'll find verses to justify what you're doing. You'll be more dangerous than you were when you were lost. Right. You got to go according to the list. Amen. You got to go in God's order. And you got to learn temperance and patience and, and then godliness. And then brotherly kindness comes easier. It's a lifelong endeavor, but it is sure worthwhile. Verse 8 For if these things, now we read the things, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful uh, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that the goal? Amen. To, be, to be fruitful? And, uh, but uh, verse 9, you better take heed. These things can be in you and not abound. 
Uh, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. That's dangerous ground, brother. Uh, John the Baptist said it like this. He must end John 1, 30, I believe it is. He must increase, but I must decrease. You forget what you were. I said it last night. You start thinking you had more of a part in cleaning up your act than you did. You don't give God the glory and the credit that he deserves. You'll increase and he'll decrease. You'll find yourself no heavenly good whatsoever because and then it's like too many in our day and age, and I'm sad to report too many people that are in churches claiming to be saved. It's not about him anymore. It's about you. Social media is all about you. Yeah. Amen. Uh, conversely, verse 10, and I'll be done. It says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, there's a formula here, ye shall never fall. Well, how about that for a precious promise? Exceeding great and precious promise. We're talking about doing right. You know what? It's as simple as that. What should we do? Do right. Amen. Like years ago, that thing about what would Jesus do? And uh, whoever, the kooks guy, grabbed that thing, snatched it up. But that's, that's, uh, that's it right there. I'll tell you what Jesus would do. I'll tell you right now. He would do right Amen. Every, even if it hurt him. Yeah. But not we don't. Yeah. We won't. We should, though. We should do right regardless if we trust God of the consequences. And he might get some glory out of our lives if we could just get the me out of our lives. Amen. Amos chapter 3 and verse 10 says this, For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Sounds like State of the Union. Uh, but they might not have known how to do right. I mean, that's what the Lord said, but you and I do. We do. If you're saved, you've got the power to do right. You've got supernatural DNA to enable you to do right. So I don't know what you're going through, what you struggled with, where, where you came from. Uh, we're just forgetting that which is behind and reaching forth unto that which is before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, we're to do right, beloved. And we can. And sometimes we're going to know what to do. Sometimes the answer is as simple as do right. Amen. Let's all stand. Uh, it isn't a matter of knowing. It's a matter of doing. Abraham asked the Lord, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the answer is, of course. And if you're a child, that should be your goal too. I say, well, I never thought about it that way. Well, maybe that's why the Lord laid us on my heart to give you tonight. And uh, there's not a lot of wiggle room in that thing, child of God. Uh, we're here to be a light, we're here to be a witness, and when we act and respond and justify and make excuses, just like lost people do, that's what they see. And I'll tell you what, if you just purpose in your heart, you're going to do right, amen, even to your loss, people, people notice, and you might get somebody's attention. You might get somebody asking you the hope or the reason that lies in you, and you'll get to answer them and say, it's all because of Jesus Christ, Amen. You'll be glad you did when you get to heaven.